All right, you guys, we're going to try this. Um, unfortunately, you get to see all the bad sides of me, which is every side. All right, we are starting on section 4.7, and that is in your book on page 343, and that's um, inverse trig functions. Now, we talked about inverse functions in earlier chapters in this book, and um, one way to determine if a function has an inverse function was to do the horizontal line test. And um, when we look at the, the horizontal line test of the graph of the given function, well, when we look at the graph of sine, we know that the domain of sine is all real numbers. And so we know that that graph is going to look something like this and continue on forever. So if I was to draw a horizontal line through the graph, it would not have an inverse function. So in order for our three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent to have an inverse function, we have to restrict the domain. And so when we look at our inverse function for sine, Ethan Bennett, Haley, will you come to the front office, please? Ethan Bennett, Haley, please come to the front office. Right. When we look at our inverse function for sine, First of all, let's look at our notation. How will you see this so that you can recognize that it's asking you to determine the inverse function? It will look and you will see arc sine or sine with our notation, inverse notation x. So if you see either one of these notations, you know that means um, inverse sine function. Now, how is that inverse sine function um, defined? It's defined as y equals arc sine of x, or you could say y equals sine inverse of x if and only if sine of y equals x. Now, there is some parameters on this that we have to follow is the only way it can equal sine y equals x where x is between negative 1 and 1, the value of sine is between negative 1 and 1, and y, which y is our angle, is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. You guys, when we talk about y, we're talking about the angle. When we talk about x, we're talking about the numerical value for that sine function. Now, when we restrict the domain to negative 1, positive 1, and our range to negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, um, our sine does have an inverse function. Now, we're going to be asked to determine the exact value of an, the inverse function of sine. Anytime we're asked to find the exact value for the inverse function of sine, we know that that is going to refer to our special angles. 0, 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. Those fall within y to pi over 2, our angle measurements. So when we're given to find the exact value the arc sine of 1 half. Basically, what this is saying is the sine of what angle is equivalent to one half. And remember, that angle has to be located between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we go back to our handy-dandy special angle sheet. And where do we know is a first quadrant angle where sine is equivalent to one half? And so that is going to be pi over 6. Always want to give that answer in radian measurements. All right, what if we had this? Arc sine of a negative one half. Basically, again, what's that saying to us? The sine of what angle is equal to negative one half? Well, remember, our angle is, um, we've got the parameters. It has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And one of the things that we want to look at, you guys, is think about the fact that sine is an odd function. So in order for us to find 
the angle negative pi over 2 to 0 is located in our fourth quadrant. That is going to give us a negative 1 half is let's go ahead and take the angle that we know gives us positive 1 half, which is pi over 6, and we just put that negative right there on there. Because we know that sine is an odd function, we know that the sine of negative pi over 6 is equivalent to negative multiplying the sine of pi over 6, which is negative. All right, you guys, so I've got a few examples that we want to try at our desk, find the exact value possible of these inverse um, trig functions, and on these, these are inverse sine functions. As I look at this first one, I'm asked to find the arc sine of a negative one. When um, I look at this, again, just don't focus on our negative. Let's say, what is that first quadrant angle where we know sine is equivalent to pi over two? Sine is equivalent to one, and that is at pi over two. And then we just add that negative to it. And then that, we know, falls between our parameters of negative pi over two and pi over two that are our definition for our inverse sine function. Now we look at number two. Where is that first quadrant angle where sine is equivalent to square root of three over two? And we know that's pi over three. All right, as we look down here at number three, we have negative square root of two over two. Again, I don't want to focus on that negative. That negative I know is going to just be, my angle is going to be negative once I find that first quadrant angle. And I say, what is the first quadrant angle where sine is equivalent to square root of 2 over 2? And that is pi over 4. Now, as I look up here at number 4 on the board, it's sine inverse of 2. First of all, 2 we do not have as a numerical value for sine on our special angle sheet. But the second thing that we need to think about is that our definition states that this value has to be between negative 1 and 1. Since it's not, then this is not possible. All right, you guys, now we're going to look at the inverse cosine function. Again, our notation is going to look like y equals r cosine, or we could see it represented as y equals cosine with our inverse notation of the negative 1 as an exponent. We know that doesn't mean an exponent of x. All right, the most important thing that we understand about this inverse cosine function is y equals r cosine, or it could be y equals cosine inverse of x. If and only if the cosine of y equals x, where x is between negative 1 and 1, and y is between 0 and pi. Now, notice, again, our x value, our x here is based upon our numerical value for the cosine of that angle, and y is going to be our angle. Now, when we look at this, again, the reason why these, um, this y is restricted is because of the, um, the fact that we have to restrict it so that it passes the horizontal line test on the graph. Now, as we look at this, I'm going to ask you to find the exact value And on this first one, I'm doing the arc cosine of one half. Basically, what I'm asking you on that is what angle measurement is equivalent to one half? And you're looking in that first quadrant, where is cosine equivalent to one half? And that is going to occur at pi over three. Now, I need y'all to look at this. When we look at these angles here, Zero to pi over two is going to put us in quadrant one. And then pi over two to pi puts us in quadrant two. So when we are looking for these arc angles and cosine, what we're looking for is quadrant one, angles that are located between quadrant one and quadrant two. Now, what do we know about cosine and quadrant one? Cosine and quadrant one is positive. But what do we know about quadrant two? Cosine and quadrant two is negative. So if we were asked to find 
of a negative one half where this differs from sine. Sine, we would just say pi over three and then make that negative pi over three. Here, we've got to find number one, we use and find our reference angle for one half. We know our reference angle is pi over three. We know that this has got to be located in the second quadrant. So to get our answer, we're going to say pi minus pi over three. And that is going to be an answer of two pi over three. The answer that we get on inverse functions for cosine must be angles that are located in the second quadrant if the numerical value, if the numerical value is negative. All right, you guys, we're back for um, kind of, I guess this will be our next little segment on find the exact values if possible. As we look at this, I'm asking you, what angle is cosine equivalent to square root of 2 over 2? And that is, since this is a positive number, a positive value, we know that's going to be located in the first quadrant. So this is going to be pi over 4. Now, when I look here, what value, what angle between 0 and pi is cosine equivalent to negative 1? And that occurs one place and one place only, and that's at pi. Now, we look down here, cosine, where is cosine equivalent to zero between zero and pi? And that occurs at pi over two. What angle measurement is cosine equal to zero? And that, that angle measurement must be between zero and pi. Now, let's look up at number four. Number four, we have negative square root of two over two. Now, when I look at that, I know it's a negative value. That negative value tells me that that's going to be located in the second quadrant because my inverse function angles have to be between the first quadrant and second quadrant only because we had to define our parameters of our, um, our angle measurement so that it would pass the, vertical, uh, the horizontal line test. So when I look at this, I say to myself, what is my first quadrant angle where cosine is equivalent to square root of 2 over 2? And that's going to be pi over 4. So pi over 4 is my reference angle. I know that this angle, to make it negative, occurs in the second quadrant. So I'm going to say pi minus pi over 4. And I'm going to get as my exact value for the arc sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. That is 3 pi over 4. When I look at the exact value for the arc cosine of 1, where is the cosine equivalent to 1 between the angles of 0 to pi? That happens at 0 radians. And here, on number 6, we're given it's a negative. Right then and there, I immediately say that occurs in the second quadrant. So I say, what is my first quadrant angle where cosine is equivalent to square root of 3 over 2? And that occurs at pi over 6. I then am going to take pi and subtract pi over 6. And I'll get as my exact value 5 pi over 6. Now, let's look at number 7 over there. I'm saying, where is cosine equivalent to pi? Well, I've got to look at that. All right, pi is greater than 1. So this is going to be not possible. Because by definition, this value that I'm looking for must be between negative 1 and 1. It can equal negative 1, it can equal 1, but it must be between those. Pi's numerical value is 3.14, and we know that's greater than 1, so it is not possible.